Hello and welcome to this click tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be looking at contracts. So the first thing you need to do is find the customer you wish to set a contract for. When you've got that customer go to activity, go to contracts, go to new contract using wizard. So this is a nice little wizard so it's a step-by-step -step guide to gradually get you through the contract and creating that contract. So the first thing we have is the company details where you can also put in a customer reference. So it might be a purchase order number. And then you've got the start and end date of that contract. Or you can also put no end date as well. So it carries on rolling. You've also got the contract value. So you can put the contract value in. And you've also got a service level agreement. So any jobs that are created from the contract would apply that service level agreement. You can also create another one by clicking on the plus sign. And then you can select a type and you can select a level which can also be configured under setting settings type so if you don't like these drop down boxes you can change them after that just click on next and then the next thing you need to do is add the sites so if we add all the sites press ok so regarding sites you could have a contract per site if you wish that's no problem at all but in this case, I just want one contract for all the sites that we are servicing. So the next thing we'll do after that is click on Next. And we can set up contract rates. So any jobs that you do from this contract may apply a different rate. However, in this case, I'm just going to clear all those rates. Um, because what I'm going to do is put a charge for each visit rather than have um, labour rates, etc. So what we're going to do after that is click on Next. We can add a preferred engineer if you wish. So if you know that this engineer is always going to work on that particular job for this contract, then you can apply that engineer automatically so you don't need to keep on scheduling them. However, it may be that you don't know who's going to be there that day, so you would leave that blank. In this case, that's what I'm going to do. And I'm just going to click on Next. But I am going to add the equipment to the contract. So this is the equipment, the assets that we're going to be servicing. So if I click on Add, I can select the equipment that we'll be servicing. Now, I've only got equipment for two sites in this case, but that's fine. So I'm going to just press OK. And I'm going to click Next. And I can now put in Notes and Description. Now, these Notes and Description will go over to the job sheet. However, if I decide later on to use a standard fault, then the standard faults Notes and Description will go to the job sheet rather than what I put in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to leave this blank and click next. And the next thing is where I decided that every job is going to be charged £100 per visit. So what I'm going to do is rather than me having to add that in for every job we do, it's going to automatically populate. So you don't need to worry about it. When the job's complete, you can just quickly invoice it. So I click on new and I'm going to go to custom material item. And I'm going to put in service visit. I'm going to put in a product code of SVR, for example, and the price each, £100. If you know what the cost is, you could also put that in. And you can also put a tax code. So that's what I'm going to use it for. However, you can use it for things of products that you know you're always going to use when you do a service visit. OK, so once that's done, just click on Next. Now, this is where we're going to set up the schedule visits. So what we're going to do is we're going to use two sites. Um, I'm going to set up a schedule visit for both of those sites and the equipment that they're for. So what we need to do first is click on new visit template and then put a description of what that visit template is. So in this case, I'm going to do six monthly visit. Now I'm going to choose the site. And then I go to equipment, click on add and go use a visit site equipment and use the two pieces of equipment that are for that site. And that's what we're going to service. Now the next thing we're going to do is you'll see here it's an all day, so it will take all day to service them, but you can untick that and say it's usually nine to 11 or nine to 12. And then you'll see down here we have standard faults. So this is what I want to use. So I'm gonna click on browse and I'm gonna use the one that I've called a service visit. You can create new ones. And with the service visit, it's going to pull through the description of work to be done in here and the notes. So as I said, this will override the previous place where you can put in the 
notes and description in the contract wizard. So I'm going to press OK. So the next thing I need to do is set up reoccurrence. So I'm going to click on set up reoccurrence. I'm going to say monthly. And I'm going to say the first weekday of every six months. The range of reoccurrence starts on the 1st of February 2017 and it's no end date. So it will keep on rolling. And I'm just going to click on OK. And it'll ask me if I want to create that next schedule visit. And I'm going to say yes. So that will now create me the visit and the job. And I'm going to click on OK. So I also want to create another one for another site with some equipment on it. So I'm going to click on new visit template again. Put in a description. Choose the site. Go to equipment. Click on add. And use that piece of equipment that I've got there. Just highlight it and press OK. So again, I'm going to go to visit details. I'm going to put my standard default template on. And then I'm going to do set up reoccurrence. Monthly. First weekday of every six months. And then I've got no end date again and press OK and click yes. So that will now be two visits and two jobs created for two separate sites. Now that will carry on rolling and it will create as we go on through the year. So I click on next. And I'll get a nice summary of what's going on with this particular contract and I can print that by clicking on print. And after that I can just click finish and that will bring up my contract. So my contract is now up and running and I can, I can amend it from at this point. So what I can do is I can quickly check my reoccurring visits to see what's going on. So I can see that they're working, they're active. That's brilliant. That's the last created visit. And this is when the next visit is due, which is in six months time, which is correct. So in here, what I might also do is you'll see here I've got automatically create visits and it's 365 days ahead, which means if I click this button here, it will create all the visits and all the job sheets for the entire year which is great if you need to do that. However, a lot of people say, well, we don't really want to clutter up click. So maybe we'll just say 14 days ahead will do. So what you can also do is click on the reminders tab and set reminders for those visits. So we can enable visit reminders seven days before that visit is due. So you can decide who gets that particular reminder. You can also enable an end date reminder for the contract if you put one in um, from here. If not, then it will just carry on rolling. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is just have a quick look at the job sheets to see what's happened to those job sheets. So you can see the job sheets have been created and you can see that our little products in there, service visit, and that's that hundred pounds per visit. Then all you need to really do is assign the engineer as and when, um, he'll fill in his times and the costs, and then you'll start seeing you'll get a contract cost up here and you can also invoice those job sheets and that invoiced amount will start accumulating up here too. And you'll start seeing a margin as well. Okay, so I'm going to save and close that. And that is the end of creating contracts. Thanks very much for listening.